Hi everyone, this is the next video in this short tutorial series I'm doing showing you how I use textures and also how I make textures and I'm going to use them to build this little cottage. If you watched the previous video you've seen how I created this little guideline kind of thing in Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator and now I'm going to use it as a basis to create a isometric cottage, little stone cottage. So I'm going to use the lasso tool, polygon lasso tool here, because it straight edges and I'll fix up the edges once they get in. So this just has to be rough. And then from there, I'm going to use a pattern, which uh, I will upload somewhere for you it'll be on the patreon somewhere at some point but it'll be there this is the pattern that i used for the castle pack that i released at christmas so i'm reusing that to make the stone cottage now obviously this is going the other angle to this wall so i can do two things either i can save two times the amount of patterns one facing this way and one facing that way but what i do instead is I just unlink it, rasterize the layer, I unlinked the pattern from the mask, and then control T to transform and flip horizontal. And then this is going the correct way. What I'm also going to do is rotate it ever so slightly, just because it has a kind of downward trend to it in the pattern that's not it's not super important, it's just something I've noticed. So, now that side is done, I'm going to do the same side, including the gables, I guess. I'm not sure if that's the correct term for it, but there, there's that part, and that's a new pattern. Just using uh, when I release the pattern pack, you'll have them all in there. This is just my, uh, full of my experiments and whatnot that you're seeing in mine. Yours won't look like that. Okay, so I've got these two walls up. It's looking pretty neat. Uh, let's see. What I'm going to do is take just a plain brush and set it to white, so I'm drawing onto the mask and I'm just going to neaten up these edges ever so slightly so that where the... Let's change this color so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. It matches the color that I'm working with too closely. There you go. You can see how that one came out quite a lot. Go back to the layer. And all this is doing is making it so it's not so false looking it's making it a little bit organic rocks are a bit lumpy and bumpy especially when they're kind of rough hewn like this just make it look a bit organic only takes a few seconds to do adds to the effect but we will do more later to make it look natural you don't have to worry about this part too much because the roof will probably cover that. What we could do, in fact, I will spend a minute doing this, is I'm going to add a new layer on top and I'm just gonna draw straight on it. I'm going to switch between the tool that I'm on, a slightly different tool. No, nah, you know what? Let's use the inking one, make it slightly thinner. Bury it. Use the selected tool and I'll undo that because I didn't. Uh, here we go. Grab the color and just blend these two sides together so they look like they're the same rock. This isn't going to be super convincing because I'm doing it quite quickly, but I think it will be enough to get rid of that quite obvious join where they obviously don't match and just make it look a little bit more convincing. 
once we add the shading, which will come at a later date, that'll pop it up even more. There's the colour there. Again, this isn't super important. It depends how precise you want it to make, but it'll annoy me if I don't do it, which is not uh, a useful trait to have, but it's what I've got, so I'm going to work with it. Go, take some of the mortar. This point is a bit too pointy. Round it off. Bring some of that warmer colour into the rock here, so it looks like it could be the same. This one's a mess, so I think I'm going to make it look like this one it's here. Pick up a new colour. one stone. Let's make that darker colour outline. So let's go between it. And then let's make this all of this into one big rock because this is quite the mess. What you could also do if you wanted to make it keep a bit more of the texture instead of what I'm doing is use the clone brush and say select this. would be smart. Uh, I'm just going to do it quick and dirty with brush tool. Yep, that looks a bit better. This wasn't what I had planned to be showing you, but this is how I work, so it's it's more realistic to show you how I just uh, switch and change from one job to the next with no particular order, just doing what grabs my fancy as it goes. Now this looks a bit awkward, so I'm going to, let's see, get like this one and make this one look a bit bigger. Okay, and I'm just going to keep keep working on this, it's not freezing up anymore. See, I'm going to try and make this, this brick as if it was this shape. Shape, so. That, let's sway a little bit. Let's make this one. Let's make this seem as if it's one whole stone as well. There we go. I think that looks see the difference from before and after if I turn this layer on and off. You can definitely see the edge there. We've kind of knitted at the seam. I think what I'll do is I'll just quickly use the healing tool brush. Just stood out too much as flat. Flat colour where it's meant to be quite textured rock. Compare before and after. Now it looks like a solid piece of wall. Okay, done that. Let's also add this front. So that wants to go above everything. So let's see. Make it Let's try and line it up. shape out this way. Again, the top of it doesn't matter so much because we're going to be covering it with a roof. And 
Yeah. I could add it to this wall and uh, just delete a white square into the thing here and that would do there. But if I then decide to move this portico around and have it porch, I should say, with this side or this side or, you know, if I just want to separate it off and use it something else, it's going to be harder to remove if I combine it into this. So instead, I'm going to undo that and put it on its own layer. Pattern. Not that rocky pattern. And scroll to random textures to this one. Same for the front. And I want to remember that it would go again. Add its own pattern. This guy again. And do the same. Unlink the layers. Right click. Rasterize. Control T. Horizontal, so it's on the right axis. Apply the transformation, and there we go. Now, I could do the same here to neaten up this little chunk. But I won't show you that right now because you've seen it done, you know how it works. Right now, everything kind of messes, merges into one because of how it, the texture here is identical, basically. So what we're going to do, just to make it look a little bit natural is move the texture around a little bit so that it doesn't line up exactly here and here. It'll also look very different once we put uh, shading onto it. Let's see. That it's going to line up with those, that corner on its own. There we go. it a little bit to try and line it up a bit better. Yeah, there we go. Some of it looks a bit weird here, but I can just neaten that up when I come to do a little bit of work on it. And maybe once the door is on it, it won't notice so much. Now I'm going to do one extra bit, which is this chimney. So I need to turn on this wall. Same thing all over again. What I'm going to do is group that, and that's the porch. Make a new group, and this will be the chimney. So, try again. Super accurate down here. Yeah, but it's close enough. So again, pattern, this pattern, okay, then link, rasterize. I could make this into an action. In fact, let's do that. Uh, I don't think I've shown you actions yet. So let's see. From here, we, this is where we just put the new pattern in, but it's the wrong way around. So this is all my useful actions. Let's make a new one. Clip pattern. Board. So what we want to do is unlink the layer, right click, rasterize layer, transform, right click, flip horizontal, apply, and finish. Okay, so now I have a flip pattern action. So just click this. So I have the selection again, delete it and pretend that click, 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 click. I just made that. I want to make the pattern. Choose this. Go to my pattern. Okay. It's the wrong way around. So let's go to my action list. Play the action we just made. Having a think about it. And there we go. Now we don't have to do all the complicated stuff. Maybe I'll add that action to the pack with the 
rest of the patterns that I'm going to release for you. Okay, now I just need to do this one last side. I'll end the top as well, actually, but I think that well, it won't be. It certainly won't be this brick pattern because it won't be the right angle. I'll just do a that sort of stony kind of texture. Okay, pattern, find the right one. There he is. Okay, and then fix him because this. There. I think what I'll do is do the same thing again where I take the. So it lines up this way. It does look slightly weird because kind of symmetrical where it shouldn't be, but it will make it easier if I do decide to go down the edges and match them up. It makes the repeats a bit more obvious too, so I'm not a huge fan, but it's a good quick, quick solution that might get covered up as we go along. Okay, I'm going to do some little touches again, like this edge. The auto select layer on so when I clicked it it selected that one. Let's take my inking brush. I think I had that anyway, but just to check. Then let's see. Just painting white onto the mask, which makes these layers uh, not the layers, the stones jut out like they would. It'll be quite subtle, especially when it's small, but if we ever zoom in on it or do anything close up. I like having it look right. So the point being that all of this is quite unnecessary. But I like doing it, but you definitely don't have to. Don't think it will show. I'm also going to do it here. And I think what I might do here Right, I need to select the mask. Again, when I add the shading, this overlap won't show up quite as strongly. I should fix this. That's a bit better. I'll press X to switch my colors around, press delete to make it leave the background color. Put my colors again, carry on. What I'm going to do on this layer to just delineate it from its background a little bit. It's double click on the layer here, which brings up this dialog box and let's see onto stroke. It's going to add whatever I was using last, which isn't useful. Maybe this one is. Nope. Okay, so we'll just edit it. I want the color to be roughly this dark color that's already surrounding it. I don't want it to be very thick. Yeah, that'll do. Just, I think actually I'll apply that to everything and then where. Let's turn off this where I've made the rock stick out a little bit. Drawn an edge around them. So right click that layer, copy layer style, and then zoom out. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Right click again, paste layer style. Make them smaller. And you can see it's it's added that little effect to all of these edges. So off and turn it off. Just outlines it a little bit, makes it look. Oh, what I forgot to do was move this layer, which I think I'll do now. So I'm going to unlink it both of them at the same time. 
just so it doesn't match up with this. Well, that didn't work right. Tie in instead then. I was thinking they would line up, but that doesn't make sense because they have to... If I move this one this way, then I have to move this way. Yeah, no. This is, because this is so tall though, it's showing my repeat a bit too frequently. So I think what I'm going to do instead is offset them. Then it doesn't make the repeat quite so obvious. Okay. Let's do one last tweak, which is I'm going to take this layer and do the same thing I was doing. Let's see. Stones out. And then once I've done that, I'm going to create a thatch texture which I think I'll do in a separate video so that if that's what you want to learn, you can learn it. If you're not interested, you can just do the ones I've made for you. I think making textures is fun, so take a look at some point. Just throwing your paint around with... Okay, almost that. Okay, so this is the bare bones our cottage. Uh, I have in here tours in the window. Let's see which one's the back window. This one. Let down behind the porch. Go, it's just peeking out. And the roof, which will cover a lot of the stuff at the top, so it, at the moment it looks very top heavy. There's, there you go, that's the guys laid on top. You can see the roof will be coming all the way down to here, so all this bare looking brick will go and we'll have something here. But first of all, we have to make that texture. So let's go do that now. <laughs> <laughs> 